What's up, fam? Welcome back to another exciting edition of Keith Walker Books Reads. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. All right, today I'm going to share a poem with you. It is titled Rwanda, Where Tears Have No Power. This poem was written by Haki Matabuti. And if I mispronounced his name, I apologize, but that's probably not the first thing I'm going to mispronounce. <laughs> this poem has uh, some country names and words that I don't say very often. So forgive me if I get something wrong. My heart is and my intentions are pure. All right. So uh, this poet, he was born as Donald Luther Lee in Little Rock, Arkansas. He traveled to Africa in 1974 and changed his name. He's a member of the Black Arts Movement. Uh, he's published more than 20 books of poetry and nonfiction works and critical essays. And he's been in, he says he was inspired by Gwendolyn Brooks, among others. All right, so he usually writes with free verse, politically charged type of poetry. And that's an example of what I'm going to read today. All right, so after I get done reading it, I'll offer an analysis. Rwanda, where tears have no power. Who has the moral high ground? 15 blocks from the White House on small corners in Northwest DC, boys disguised as me rip each other's hearts out with weapons made in China. They fight for territory. Across the planet in a land where civilization was born, the boys of DC know nothing about their distant relatives in Rwanda. They have never heard of the Hutu or Tutsi people. Their eyes draw blanks at the mention of Kigali, Bayamba, or Buteri. All they know are the streets of DC and do not cry at funerals anymore. Numbers and frequency have a way of making murder commonplace and not news, unless it spreads outside of our house, block territory. Modern massacres are intra-ethnic. Bosnia, Sri Lanka, Burundi, Nagorno, Karabakh, Iraq, Laos, Angola, Liberia, and Rwanda are small foreign names on a map made in Europe when bodies by the tens of thousands float down a river turning the water the color of blood as a quarter of a million people flee barefoot into Tanzania and Zaire. Somehow we notice. We do not smile. We have no more tears. We hold our thoughts in deeply muted silence looking south and thinking that today Nelson Mandela seems much larger than he is. Okay, so that's that poem. All right, so as far as the analysis, um, we'll start with the title, Rwanda, Where Tears Have No Power. I believe the poet is saying at this point, no amount of sorrow, no amount of tears is, is doing anything to stop the genocide, stop the bloodshed. So he's referencing uh, genocides that have occurred in a lot of different countries. He mentions a lot of them. And um, Rwanda is the one that he's focused on for this poem. The first line of this poem, he says, who has the high ground? Later in the next stanza, he talks about the uh, violence that's going on in D.C. So who has the moral high ground? I believe he's in the United States. We as a country, politicians, we believe that we have the moral high ground and we can uh, talk and discuss and condemn violence that's going on in other countries. But as he mentions, there's violence going on in the United States and we are not doing anything to stop it here. So do we really have the moral high ground to speak on violence elsewhere? Um, <clears throat> in that second stanza that I was mentioning, he says, 15 blocks from the White House on small corners in Northwest DC, boys disguised as me rip each other's hearts out. So he's referencing, uh, seems like gang violence. Interesting, he says, boys disguised as me. So he's saying these are people that look like me, which would mean black people, but this is a disguise. He doesn't feel like they're like him at all because he's obviously reached a point where he sees the senselessness in this and they haven't. So they're not really like him. They're thinking it's not like him. And um, he says that they don't know that um, they fight for territory across the planet in a land where civilization was born. So he's refer referencing Africa there. Um, and he also said that they don't, we don't know our heritage. He says uh, they never heard of the Hutu or Tutsi people. So 
these gangsters in America, they don't know how great they are. They don't know anything about their history. Um, later, he says, um, in D.C., they don't cry at funerals anymore. Numbers and frequency have a way of making murder commonplace and not news. And this is true. I, I was watching a documentary recently about um, Chicago, and they were saying that it was, a, it was a police officer that was actually saying this, and they were talking about how things were getting a little bit better, and he was like, well, I don't see it. I mean, you got last weekend we had three dozen shootings, and this weekend, this past weekend, we only had two dozen. I don't see that as getting better. So um, it, when you have so many murders, then you, you stop mourning for them, which is bad. Um, he says this line is interesting. Once he mentions all of these countries, he says there are small foreign names on a map made in Europe. So all of these countries, they're foreign to us. We don't really care about them like we should. But he says the map was made in Europe, which kind of stresses that the Europeans have all the power. We know about Europe. We know where their country is. We know how powerful that is. And this map was made in Europe, but we don't know about all these little places on the map. Um, Later, he says he has no more, we have no more tears. We hold our thoughts uh, in deeply muted silence. So we're all cried out. Uh, at the end of the poem, which is kind of interesting, he mentions Mandela. He says that um, in deeply muted silence, looking south towards Africa and thinking that today, Nelson Mandela seems much larger than he is. And at this point, what I believe he's saying in that line, we, are, we know that um, Nelson Mandela, he's, known for ending apartheid in South Africa, and he became president, but he fought for a long time to end apartheid. But we're looking at him much larger than he is, so we give him a lot of credit and we see him as something great, but even he can't stop the um, genocides that are occurring in Africa. So, all right, so that is uh, my uh, take on this poem. I hope you like my analysis. If so, hit the like button. You want to post a comment? Let me know I misspelled all these words. Go ahead and post a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Or you can tell me what uh, poem you want me to tackle next. You can put that in the comment section as well. And if you just happen upon this video and you're not subscribed to my channel, this would be a great time to do so. Hit the subscribe button. I'd love to see you around again. I appreciate your support, and I'll see you next time.